basically a full ride to Wake Forest University. When I left. Hi. Ooh, I look crazy right now, but we're just gonna ignore that. Hi, my name's Angelia, and if you don't know who I am, which you probably don't, I am somewhat of an amateur fashion designer, and I don't really make the best decisions, today being one of them. I tend to procrastinate a lot, and I have to go out tomorrow night, and I have nothing to wear. So I thought I would make my own dress. Again, not the best decision I've ever made, but uh, I have some fabric laying around and I think I know what I want to make. So this is what I have. It's kind of like a dark emerald satin or charmeuse. It's really light and my idea that I think I want to do is I want to do cow neck for sure because I love my cow necks. I want to go short, I want to go sexy, maybe with like little slits on the side. And I kind of want it to be form-fitting, but not too form-fitting, like I still want to be able to eat, but I also want it to stay looking sexy. So uh, I thought I would bring you guys on this journey with me on how I make a dress in a day. And if it turns out well, then I will probably be releasing the pattern for this dress. It's gonna be pretty simple, it's just a cow neck slip dress, but I feel like it's very versatile, like if you want it, you can make it longer for a more formal event, um, but since I'm going out tomorrow, I think I'm gonna keep it short. So I do have a cow neck dress pattern that I've done in the past, you've probably seen it on my Instagram, it looks like this pearls but it's a bit too formal for what I'm doing tomorrow so I'm going to be maybe I'll do two versions okay so I'm probably gonna do one that's just a regular slip dress that's just cut straight like this and then maybe I'll do one with this sexy slit Ooh, yeah with the sexy slit with the with the pearls as a variation. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do two versions. And then I might as well just release this version too. So maybe I'll just make this into like a cowl neck dress set that can be dressed up or down for whatever occasion you're going to. Yeah, I'm very excited. I think I'm going to make some adjustments to this pattern because I remember it being a little bit too big on me. I need to see. Yeah. But again, I only have one day to make this dress, so let me get to it. Okay, I think what my game plan is going to be is I do have this velvet dress that I like the length of, so I'm going to use this as reference for length. I'm going to compare my cowl neck cami pattern that I've done in the past because this fits me pretty well um, and compare it to this dress pattern and see how different it is and make adjustments like that. So that's what I'm going to do first. And since I think I'm going to be releasing all three of these patterns as like a package, I think um, I need to see if I have some extra fabric, which I probably do. Okay, as you can see, I'm pretty obsessed with um, satin. I have it in many different colors. I think I'm feeling this like light, like minty green color. It looks really silver on camera right now, but I promise you it's pretty minty colored in real life. I can kind of tell how minty it is when it's like, yeah, I think I'm gonna use this. Okay, so I'm done with the patterns. It took a bit longer than expected to make it balanced and corrected. I didn't realize how messed up the pattern was. I think because when I was making this dress, 
also I was in a rush so I kind of just rolled with it and then fitted it on my body without actually correcting the pattern but I think the pattern is corrected as much as it can so now I'm just going to cut the pattern pieces out onto fabric and I will show you guys how to do that so to cut this pattern first I'm going to lay out the fabric nice and flat and then I'm going to line up the top edge of the fabric to the salvage to create a triangle shape. Like I said in previous videos, if you're working with slinky fabric like this, it's best to lay some scrap paper underneath your fabric so it doesn't move as much while cutting. But since I was in a rush, I skipped that step, but trust me, that tip definitely helps when cutting your fabric. Now that I have it folded in a perfect triangle, the fold line will now become your true bias while you'll be laying your pattern on. So this is what it looks like with all your patterns laid down on true bias. We have the back, the front, and the back facing, but hold off on cutting the back facing just yet. I've also marked out the bias strips that will become the straps. You can reference the pattern instructions for the size you need to cut. So I made the shorter version of this dress so I didn't run into any issues when I was laying out my pattern. But if you're planning on making the longer version of this dress, you might have an issue of not having wide enough fabric to cut your patterns. So I made a diagram up to proportions of how you would lay your patterns with different widths of fabric. As you can see, if you're planning on cutting the longer dress, you're gonna have to pre-mark where the pattern gets cut off and sew in an extra piece of fabric to make the width of the fabric wider, as I'm showing you here. The grain line of the fabric doesn't change, we're just seaming in an extra triangle of fabric to make the pattern fit the width of the fabric. Your final dress will have an extra seam here, but if you sew it nice and flat and you press the seam, that extra seam will be barely noticeable in the final product. Here I am cutting out all my pieces. Again, hold off on cutting out your back facing. There's one extra step you need to do before fully cutting it out, which I'll be showing you next. So the reason why I held off on cutting my back facing is because I'm going to need to fuse it first. You can use any lightweight fusible, I'm using a tree coat fusible. And the method I'm doing right now is called block fusing, which means I cut out a block of fabric and fusible big enough for the pattern I'm cutting, ironing the block together first and then cutting out my back facing shape. This is to ensure a more solid fuse and there will be less of a chance of it coming apart. Okay, so I have all my pieces cut here. And I have my back facing cut and it's fused. This is what it looks like. So now all I gotta do is sew. Things are looking good, I hope. So the first pieces I'm going to sew are the straps. Um, I'm just going to be folding them in half, right side together, and then sewing like a quarter inch seam. I'll be cutting off the excess um, seam allowance down to like an eighth of an inch just so it's not bulky on the inside when we flip it. So the strap at the bottom is the one that I trimmed down. I'm going to do the same thing to the top strap. I have my straps trimmed down. Now I'm going to flip it. So how I'm going to flip it is I'm going to use this amazing tool called a... Uh, what is this called? Bias strip turner? A loop turner? I don't know. I'm going to be linking it in the description box below so that you can buy it too because this thing is amazing. So all you have to do is you stick it in and then there's like a little hook at the end of this. I'm going to hook this on the end of my strap, kind of like poke it through, and then there's a latch that you have to close it before you pull it through or else the hook's going to get caught in, in the rest of the fabric. It might take a couple tries to get it to flip correctly. Fudge with it a little bit, there we go, so that it turns. It looks like that, and then you just pull the rest out, and it should still be hooked on to the end of this bias strap. And you just flip the rest of this, and then there you go. We have a flipped, flipped strap. It looks 
too. So I'm gonna do the same to the other one. straps so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to press it um, flat make sure that the seam is staying to one side at least so when you put it into your dress um, your straps won't look twisted so one way I recommend pressing these straps is by having a little pin and pin it to the ironing board so that it kind of holds the strap down while you're pressing it. And when you're pressing it, you want to make sure that the seam sticks to one side of the strap. So when you put it on your garment, the seam's not going to be visible when you wear it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but preferably try to keep the seam to one side. Okay, so it might be hard to see, but I've pressed it, and as you can see, I kept the seam on one side of the strap, so there's the seam side, and then when I flip it over, the other side is like clean, and there's no seam showing. So this will be the face of the strap, and then there'll be like a wrong side of the strap. Next, I'm going to be trimming down my strap down to size. Again, you can reference towards the pattern instruction for the length of strap you need to cut. Okay, now that I have my straps done, I'm going to move on to the body of this dress. I think what I'm going to do first is sew my facing together. And I'm going to show you guys how to line it up. To attach your back facing, you're going to lay down your front piece first, right side up, and then you're going to take your facing, there is an outer curve and an inner curve. The inner curve should have notches in them, that's where your straps are going to go. So you're going to take your back facing and line it up with your front facing like so, and you're just going to sew a half an inch on both sides, I'm pointing right now. Now that I've attached my facing, I'm going to attach my back dress to the front. I'm going to put the pieces right sides together and then sew the side seams down with half an inch seam allowance. This is optional, I included a slit into mine, but if you don't want a slit, you can just sew it straight down to the hem. If you do, you just stop your stitch at the top of your slit. After I've sewn everything together, I'm going to finish off all my seams with a marrow. So I'm going to marrow the bottom edge of my facings, the side seams of the body, and also the side seams of the facing. So I'm just going to marrow all of that so it doesn't fray. If you don't have a marrow machine, you could just French seam your side seams and baby hem the bottom edge of your facing instead. Now that I have all of my seams clean, finished, and marrowed, I'm going to attach my straps to the back opening now. Hopefully you have remembered to mark your notches in your back opening. This will show where the straps will be sewn and then I'm going to flip the garment inside out. Remember that there is a wrong side to the strap and there's a right side to the strap. The wrong side has the seam, the right side is just flat and clean. So you're going to place the strap right side facing towards the right side of the fabric as well. Again, right side and then the wrong side and you're going to place it right side towards the right side of the fabric. Then you're going to do a little tack where the straps are just to keep them in place. 
This is what it's supposed to look like once you have the straps sewn down onto the back opening. Then what I'm going to do is I'm only going to flip the body part of the dress inside out. Now you see me pointing out these notches. This is where the other end of the straps will be going. So again, right side of the straps will be facing right side of the fabric and you're just going to be lining it up right where the notches are. I'm going to be doing that to both sides. You can also pin the straps into place so they don't move around when you're sewing. Next, I'm going to take the excess straps and tuck them inside the body of the dress, making sure not to move the end. Definitely pinning down the straps before doing this will make it a whole lot easier process. Next, I'm going to take my facings and I'm going to tuck them inside the body of the dress as well, making sure to line up the back opening and the armholes together. This is me checking to make sure that my straps are still in place where the notches are. Once everything is tucked in correctly, I'm going to make a stitch along the armholes where I'm pointing and along the back opening. So it's going to be like a U shape and I'm going to sew a half an inch and marrow finish it as well. This is what it looks like after everything is sewn and clean finished with the marrow machine. And then I'm going to flip the garment inside out to double check if everything is in the right place. Once it's flipped, this is what the front looks like. Very cute. And this is back. What's left to do now is to press all my seams nice and flat and then all I have to do now is uh, the hem. So this dress is almost done. Exciting! To finish this hem, I'm going to do a baby hem and to start that, I'm going to fold over about a quarter of an inch and sew right down the middle of it. This will make it easier to do your second and final turn for a nice and clean baby hem. So this is what it looks like after the first fold. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. I'm going to fold it one more time and do another 1 8 inch stitch to clean finish everything up. And then when it comes to the side slits, you're going to stitch kind of like a square or like a rectangle or like maybe like a U shape, like what I'm pointing out right now. So it will hold down everything nice and clean. And this is it. This is what the dress looks like. I'm really happy with how it came out um, given how little time I had to sew it. And like I said before, there is a longer version of this pattern that you can make as well. And these are some of the photos of what the dress looked like the day that I made it.
It is a new day and I am starting on the pearl version of this dress. Here I am making some minor adjustments so I can provide you guys with the best fitting pattern. The pearl version is also going to be fully lined so the cutting process is going to be a little bit different compared to the basic version. The cutting process starts out the same as the basic version by folding the fabric into a triangle shape to find true bias and laying down my back pattern along the bias. I also placed my bottom front flat pattern using a ruler to make sure it's perfectly biased as well. Now to note, you should be cutting your lining pieces out of lining fabric, but I didn't have that at the time, so I'm just cutting it out of self fabric for now. Cutting your lining pieces out of lining fabric ensures your dress will stay nice, light, and flowy. Since the front of the dress is asymmetrical, you can't cut the pattern piece on fold, so you're going to have to lay it flat and use your ruler to place your pattern on true bias, aka 90 degrees to the selvage. And as always, don't forget to mark your notches. This dress has no back facing, but I'm still cutting a piece of fusible using the back facing pattern from the original dress. And I'm going to be ironing that onto the back lining piece on the wrong side of the lining. So for reference, the shiny side of my lining will be the wrong side because I want the inside of my dress to stay matte. And then just like the first dress, I'm going to be sewing the straps first by folding them in half right side together, trimming off the excess seam allowance, and then using my loop turner tool to flip them inside out. Like before, I'm going to be pressing my straps flat, making sure that the seam stays on one side of the strap. Next, you're going to be trimming down your straps to the length that you need. Again, reference towards the pattern instructions to see what length you need to cut them to. Then we're going to be moving on to the body of the dress. These are all the pieces laid out for reference. So the front of the dress on the left, the back of the dress, and then the front lining and back lining pieces. To begin the sewing process, we need to first attach the bottom flat pieces to the body of the dress. So to do that, I'm going to flip the bottom flat piece up and sewing across a 3 quarter inch tack with half an inch seam allowance to hold the flat piece in place. And I'm going to repeat the same thing to the lining. This is what it should look like after you sewed the flat pieces together with the main body of the dress. Now we're going to attach the front lining to the front of the dress. You're going to take your front lining piece, making sure that the slit is facing the same way as the main body of the dress, and you're going to lay it flat on top, right side to right side, and that top facing edge, you're going to sew a half an inch seam and marrow it so it doesn't fray. Like I said before, I want the inside of my dress to stay matte, so that's why the matte side of the lining is facing towards the shiny side of the self of the dress. After that seam is sewn, I'm going to press it flat and then we're going to move on to attaching the backs to the front of the dress. So we have the back self piece and the back lining piece with the fusible. And I'm going to show you how to line it up with the main body of the dress. So this is what it should look like when you line up the back with the front. So the left side is going to be the self part of the dress and then the right side is going to be the lining of the dress and you're going to sew the side seams together half an inch 
as well as mirroring it so it has a nice and clean finish. This is what it should look like after sewing all the side seams together and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the lining inside out and shove it into the main body of the dress. I want to make sure that the back opening of both the lining and the main body of the dress lines up perfectly as well as the armholes. So this is what everything should look like now and then what's next to do is to pin the straps into place and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So to pin the straps into place, I'm going to start by pinning the back where the back notches are and again there's a right side and a wrong side to the strap. So you're going to insert your strap in between the lining and the self where the notches are and the strap is going to be facing right side up. Repeating the same step to the other side, again insert it inside the dress with the right side of the strap facing up. This is what it should look like. And then I'm going to pin it into place so it doesn't move. You can also tack it into place, but I kind of got lazy at this point, so I just pinned it for now. Now to pin the straps to the front of the dress, you're going to make sure the straps don't get twisted, and you're going to run the straps still in between the self and the lining, and out where the notches are at the top of the armhole. Again, make sure that the right side of your straps are facing up to make sure that they're facing the right way when you're wearing your dress. So this is what it should look like when you have your straps pinned into place. We have the back strap pinned and the front strap pinned. So what you're going to do is you're going to run a half an inch seam along the back opening and the armhole of this dress. And then you're also going to mirror it so that it is clean finished. This is what everything should look like after it is sewn and clean finished. This is what the front looks like with the flap. And what I'm showing you here is where the top of the flap joins with the side seam. The seam allowance of the flap is tacked down by the side seam right now, so I'm going to cut a little slit to release the seam allowance of the top of the flap. As you can see, the seam allowance now stands straight up, which is exactly what we want. And then we're going to flip it over and repeat it on the other side as well. So now what I'm going to do is flip the dress inside out so that the
the dress is facing right side out. As you can see, it may take a minute to figure out which way is the right side, so you'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> To join the self to the lining at the slit, you have your dress facing right side out and what you're going to do is take one side of the slit and flip it towards inwards so the fabric is facing right side to right side and join that seam together. You can use pins to keep the edge together before you sew. Continue flipping and lining up the slit edges until you have matched both sides of the slit to sew. And to sew it together, you're going to sew a half an inch seam on both sides. And to finish the seam, you're going to narrow it. This is what it should look like after you sewed the lining to the self at the slits. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to sew a understitch, which means that I'm going to take the seam allowance that was created from sewing the two sides together. I'm going to sew a 1 8 stitch to tack the seam allowance onto the lining. This will ensure a cleaner and crisper fold line. Here's a close-up of what the understitch looks like after you've sewn down the seam allowance. As you can see, the seam is fairly close to where the lining and the self joins. Time to give all of my folds and all of my seams a nice press making sure to press around the armholes and the back opening as well as the light press around the side seams and a nice hard press where the slit is. After everything's pressed, this is what it should look like, a nice clean and crisp line at the slit. Now what I'm gonna do is flip it inside out once again to be able to mark where I want my pearls to go. I first marked out how high I wanted the slit to be and then I spaced out my pearls about 5 eighths of an inch apart. Depending on the size of your pearl, the space between each pearl may vary, but um, I would recommend laying it out first before marking your dress. To sew on your pearls, I'm using this skein pre-wax sewing thread. This thread is super strong and the wax prevents it from getting tangled when sewing. If you can't get your hands on this type of thread, you can just run your needle through the pearl a couple extra times to make sure that it's fully attached to the fabric. So to start, I'm going to run my needle between the lining and the self and it's going to come out at my first mark where I want my pearl to be. Once I have my needle poking out where I want the first pearl to be, I'm going to stick in the first pearl and run the needle through it and then I'm going to take the needle and grab a couple threads from the fabric on the other side where the pearl is going to attach to. Once I got that, I'm going to run the needle through it and pull the pearl nice and tight. Then I'm going to run the needle through the pearl again and do the same thing. Grab a couple threads from the other side of the slit 
and run the needle through it. And I'm going to repeat this process two or three more times to ensure that the pearl is really intact between the slit. Here's another angle, so I'm going to grab a couple threads from the fabric, run it through the pearl, like so, and grab a couple more thread of fabric on the other side, and run the needle straight through. So you should only be grabbing little pieces of fabric each pass through the pearl um, and your stitches shouldn't show on the right side of the fabric. To move on to the next pearl, you use the tunnel created by sewing the understitch as a path to jump to where you want your next pearl to be. If you're using the skein thread, I recommend running the needle through the pearl maybe like three or four times, but if you're using just regular thread, I would probably do like five or six times to make sure that it's a really strong connection. And your pearls won't pop out when you're wearing it because that would be a disaster. Once you're at the end of your thread or you've decided that's how high you want your slit to be, you're going to stick the needle straight through into the flap between the lining and the self. And you're just going to knot it off and make sure that everything is secured. I ended up tying about three knots and also running my needle through a couple tacks just to make sure that everything is secured and it won't fall when you're wearing it. Last but not least, we're going to do a baby hem on both the lining and the self of the fabric. Again, I'm going to be folding it over about a quarter of an inch and sewing a little edge stitch to create my first fold for the baby hem. Here I am sewing the second fold of my baby hem. Again, I'm going to fold it over about an eighth of an inch and then sewing an edge stitch to finish up my baby hem. Now to give everything and the hem a nice good press and everything should be done. This version of the dress is definitely very elevated and elegant. Again, like I said before, there is a longer version available in the bundle as well.
everything will be linked in the description box below i spent a lot of time perfecting and grading this pattern so i really do hope you enjoy it and i definitely want to make more in the future so please subscribe and like this video to see more of mine in the future comment below to let me know if there's any other patterns you would like me to share and i'll see you guys in the next video bye